the Savior, has always been the protector of those who would accept his protection. He has said more than once how oft I would have gathered you as a hen gathereth her chickens, and ye would not. The Lord expressed the same lament in our own dispensation after describing the many ways in which he calls us to safety. How oft have I called upon you by the mouth of my servants and by the ministering of angels and by mine own voice and by the voice of thunderings and by the voice of lightnings and by the voice of tempests and by the voice of earthquakes and great hailstorms and by the voice of famines and pestilences of every kind and by the great sound of a trump and by the voice of judgment and by the voice of mercy all the day long and by the voice of glory and honor and the riches of eternal life and would have saved you with an everlasting salvation, but ye would not. There seems to be no end to the Savior's desire to lead us to safety. And there is constancy in the way he shows us the path. He calls by more than one means so that it will reach those willing to accept it. And those means always include sending the message by the mouths of his prophets whenever people have qualified to have the prophets of God among them. Those authorized servants are always charged with warning the people, telling them the way to safety. When tensions ran high in northern Missouri in the fall of 1838, the prophet Joseph Smith called for all the saints to gather to far west for protection. Many were on isolated farms or in scattered settlements. He specifically counseled Jacob Hahn, founder of a small settlement called Hahn's Mill. A record of that time includes this. Brother Joseph had sent word by Hahn, who owned the mill, to inform the brethren who were living there to leave and come to far west. But Mr. Hahn did not deliver the message. Later, the prophet Joseph recorded it in his history. Up to this day, God had given me wisdom to save the people who took counsel. None had ever been killed who have abided by my counsel. Then the prophet recorded the sad truth that innocent lives could have been saved at Hans Mill had his counsel been received and followed. In our own time, we have been warned with counsel of where to find safety from sin and from sorrow. One of the keys to recognizing those warnings is that they are repeated. For instance, more than once in these general conferences, you have heard our prophets say that he would quote a preceding prophet and would therefore be a second witness and sometimes even a third. Each of us who has listened has heard President Kimball give counsel on the importance of a mother in the home and then heard President Benson quote him and we have heard President Hinckley quote them both. The Apostle Paul wrote that in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. One of the ways we may know that the warning is from the Lord is that the law of witnesses, authorized witnesses, has been invoked. When the words of prophets seem repetitive, that should rivet our attention and fill our hearts with gratitude to live in such a blessed time. Looking for the path to safety in the Council of Prophets makes sense to those with strong faith. When a prophet speaks, those with little faith may think that they hear only a wise man giving good advice. Then if his counsel seems comfortable and reasonable, squaring with what they want to do, they take it. If it does not, they consider it either faulty advice or they see their circumstances as justifying their being, ex being an exception to the counsel. Those without faith may think that they hear only men seeking to exert influence for some selfish motive. They may mock and deride, as did a man named Korahor, with these words recorded in the Book of Mormon. And thus ye lead away this people after the foolish traditions of your fathers and according to your own desires, and ye keep them down, even as it were in bondage, that ye may glut yourselves with the labors of their hands, that they durst not look up with boldness, that they durst not enjoy their rights and privileges. Korahor was arguing, as men and women have falsely argued from the beginning of time, that to take counsel from the servants of God is to surrender God-given rights of independence. But the argument is false because it misrepresents reality. 
When we reject the counsel which comes from God, we do not choose to be independent of outside influence. We choose another influence. We reject the protection of a perfectly loving, all-powerful, all-knowing Father in heaven whose whole purpose as that of his beloved Son is to give us eternal life, to give us all that he has and to bring us home again in families to the arms of his love. In rejecting his counsel, we choose the influence of another power whose purpose is to make us miserable and whose motive is hatred. We have moral agency as a gift of God. Rather than the right to choose to be free of influence, it is the inalienable right to submit ourselves to whichever of those powers we choose. Another fallacy is to believe that the choice to accept or not accept the counsel of prophets is no more than deciding whether to accept good advice and gain its benefits or to stay where we are. But the choice not to take prophetic counsel changes the very ground upon which we stand. It becomes more dangerous. The failure to take pr prophetic counsel lessens our power to take inspired counsel in the future. The best time to have decided to help Noah build the ark was the first time he asked. Each time he asked after that, each failure to respond would have lessened sensitivity to the spirit and so each time his request would have seemed more foolish until the rain came, and then it was too late. Every time in my life when I have chosen to delay following inspired counsel or decided that I was an exception, I came to know that I had put myself in harm's way. Every time that I have listened to the Council of Prophets, felt it confirmed in prayer, and then followed it, I have found that I moved towards safety. Along the path, I have found that the way had been prepared for me in the rough places made smooth. God led me to safety along a path which was prepared with loving care, sometimes prepared long before. The account at the beginning of the Book of Mormon is of a prophet of God, Lehi. He was also the leader of a family. He was warned by God to take those he loved to safety. Lehi's experience is a type of what happens as God give, gives counsel through his servants. Of Lehi's family, only those who had faith and who themselves received confirming revelation saw both the danger and the way to safety. For those without faith, the move into the wilderness seemed not only foolish, but dangerous. Like all prophets, Lehi to his dying day tried to show his family where safety would lie for them. He knew that the Savior holds responsible those to whom he delegates priesthood keys. With those keys comes the power to give counsel that will show us the way to safety. Those with keys are responsible to warn even when their counsel might not be followed. Keys are delegated down a line which passes from the prophet through those responsible for ever smaller groups of members closer and closer to families and to individuals. That is one of the ways by which the Lord makes a stake a place of safety. For instance, I have sat with my wife in a meeting of parents called by our bishop, our neighbor, so that he could warn us of spiritual dangers faced by our children. I heard more than the voice of my wise friend. I heard a servant of Jesus Christ with keys, meeting his responsibility to warn and passing to us, the parents, the responsibility to act. When we honor the keys of that priesthood channel by listening and giving heed, we tie ourselves to a lifeline which will not fail us in any storm. Our Heavenly Father loves us. He sent his only begotten Son to be our Savior. He knew that in mortality we would be in grave danger, the worst of it from the temptations of a terrible adversary. That is the one of the reasons why the Savior has provided priesthood keys so that those with ears to hear and faith to obey could go to places of safety. Having listening ears requires humility. You remember the Lord's warning to Thomas B. Marsh 
He was then the president of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. The Lord knew that President Marsh and his brethren of the Twelve would be tested. He gave counsel about taking counsel. The Lord said, Be thou humble, and the Lord thy God shall lead thee by the hand and give the answer to thy prayers. The Lord added a warning that is applicable to any who follow a living prophet. Exalt not yourselves. Rebel not against my servant Joseph, but verily I say unto you, I am with him, and my hand shall be over him, and the keys which I have given unto him, and also to you words shall not be taken from him till I come. God offers us counsel, not just for our own safety, but for the safety of his other children whom we should love. There are few comforts so sweet as to know that we have been an instrument in the hands of God in leading someone else to safety. That blessing generally requires the faith to follow counsel when it is hard to do. An example from church history is that of Reddick Newton Allred. He was one of the rescue parties sent out by Brigham Young to bring in the Willie and Martin Handcart companies. When a terrible storm hit, Captain Grant, captain of the rescue party, decided to leave some of the wagons by the Sweetwater River as he pressed ahead to find the handcart companies. With the blizzards howling and the weather becoming life-threatening, two of the men left behind at the Sweetwater decided that it was foolish to stay. They thought that either the handcart companies had wintered over somewhere or had perished. They decided to return to the Salt Lake Valley and tried to persuade everyone else to do the same. Reddick Allred refused to budge. Brigham had sent them out, and his priesthood leader had told him to wait there. The others took several wagons, all filled with needed supplies, and started back. Even more tragic, each wagon they met coming out from Salt Lake, they turned back as well. They turned back 77 wagons, returning all the way to Little Mountain, where President Young learned what was happening and turned them around again. When the Willie Company was finally found and had made that heart-rending pull up and over Rocky Ridge, it was Reddick Allred in his wagons that waited for them. In this conference, you will hear inspired counsel, for instance, to reach out to the new members of the Church. Those with the faith of Reddick Newton Allred will keep offering friendship, even when it seems not to be needed or to have no effect. They will persist when some new member reaches the point of spiritual exhaustion, they will be there offering kind words and fellowship. They will then feel the same divine approval Brother Allred felt when he saw those handcart pioneers struggling toward him, knowing he could offer them safety because he had followed counsel when it was hard to do. While the record does not prove it, I am confident that Brother Allred prayed while he waited. I am confident that his prayers were answered. He then knew that the counsel to stand fast was from God. We must pray to know that. I promise you answers to such prayers of faith. Sometimes we will receive counsel that we cannot understand or that seems not to apply to us, even after careful prayer and thought. Don't discard the counsel, but hold it close. If someone you trusted handed you what appeared to be nothing more than sand with the promise that it contained gold, you might wisely hold it in your hand a while, shaking it gently. Every time I have done that with counsel from a prophet, after a time, the gold flakes have begun to appear, and I have been grateful. We are blessed to live in a time when the priesthood keys are on the earth. We are blessed to know where to look and how to listen for the voice that will fulfill the promise of the Lord that he will gather us to safety. I pray for you and for me that we will have humble hearts, that we will listen, that we will pray, that we will wait for the deliverance of the Lord which is sure to come as we are faithful. I testify that God our Heavenly Father lives and loves us. This is the Church of Jesus Christ. He lives and loves us. He is the head of the Church, and He is our Savior. 
I testify that Gordon B. Hinckley holds all the keys of the priesthood of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.